Hello everybody, this is uh, Brother Luke, also known as Sin City Preacher on YouTube. Are you an inquisitive person? Do you like asking questions? And do you like getting answers? Well, there's a lot of interesting questions in life, but there are a few questions that I would call essential questions. These are the most important questions that have ever been asked. These questions were asked in the Bible, and I'm thankful that the answers are also in the Bible. So let's see if you have ever asked yourselves these questions. Number one, who is Jesus? Uh, that question is so important that Jesus once asked his apostles this question. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 17, it says, When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus asked his apostles, Who do they say that he is? Simon answered the question that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus affirmed it. He did not deny it and say, No, Simon, Peter, you're wrong. Uh, he did not just ignore the, the answer either. He told Simon Peter that Simon received this information from God the Father. So he affirmed that the answer was correct, that he is indeed the Christ, the Son of the living God. So, if you study the Bible, you find that Jesus claimed that he came down from heaven. Uh, Jesus said that the Father and he were one. If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. The Bible says that uh, God was manifest in the flesh, that, uh, that, that God became flesh and lived among us. So, the Bible and Jesus... Uh, state that Jesus Christ is indeed God manifest in the flesh, the Son of God. Now, second question. Have you ever asked, what do I have to do so I can go to heaven when I die? That's a good question, isn't it? I suspect that most people have asked themselves that question. Well, if you go to the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, it says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You see, this scene takes place in, in a jail in Philippi. The Philippian jailer asked the Apostle Paul and his associates, what must I do to be saved? What do I have to do so I can be saved from judgment and hell and instead go to heaven. What do I have to do? 
And the Apostle Paul answered the man directly. He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on Jesus and you're saved. Believe on Jesus. That means that you put your faith on Him. You put your trust on Him. You rely on Him. You depend on Him. You give your soul over to Him and trust Him to get you to heaven. You rely completely on Him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're saved. Question number three. Maybe you're asking yourself this question right now. It can't be that easy. Don't we have to do some kind of religious work to be saved? Join a religion? Do good deeds? Follow the commandments? Is it more required than just believing on Jesus? Well, let's go to the book of John, chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered them, said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. In this scene, the Jewish religious leaders, who were the most religious among the Jews. They were asking Jesus, what kind of work do they have to do so that they can qualify for heaven? You see, they believe that you got to heaven, you earned salvation through religious work. Maybe some of you believe that. Most of the people in the world believe that one way or another. All religions are based upon doing some kind of religious work so that you can somehow qualify to get into heaven based upon your own personal merit, on your own performance. And the Jews believe that, so they asked Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now, you can learn a lot by what Jesus said and also by what he did not say. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. God sent his Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who did God send? He sent His Son, Jesus Christ. He sent His Son to die on a cross for the sins of the world. And Jesus said, You want to know what work is required? <laughs> There's only one thing that's required. Believe on the one God sent. Me. Jesus says, God sent me. I'm the Son of God. I'll die for the sins of the world. All you've got to do, all you are required to do, is believe on me. Now, you notice that Jesus did not tell them, God requires you to join a religion. Jesus did not tell them, God requires you to become a religious person. Jesus did not say, God requires you to follow a set of religious rules and then keep your fingers crossed hoping that you are good enough and you qualify for heaven. Jesus said, God requires one thing. Believe on the one he sent, Jesus Christ. Now, question number four. This is a question that you've probably asked yourself, and you've, you've done one of several things. The question is, what will you do with Jesus? Now that you know who Jesus is, now that you know that you must believe on Jesus, that's what is required of you. If you want to go to heaven, what will you do with Jesus? Will you put this off till another day? Will you reject Jesus? Will you put your faith in Jesus? There's all kinds of 
choices you have right now. What will you do with Jesus? If you look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, 23, it says, Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they crowd out, cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. The governor, Pontius Pilate, had Jesus on trial, and he asked the public to make the decision. What should we do? What sh will you do with Jesus? And the crowd the cried, the crowd cried out, crucify him. That same question is asked of every one of us today. What will you do with Jesus? I'm asking you to put your faith in him so you can go to heaven. Now some of you are thinking this question right now, but there must be other ways to get into heaven, right? Why do I need Jesus? There's got to be other ways to get into heaven. Well, let's go to the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So here we have Jesus himself saying that he is the way to the Father in heaven. Jesus emphasizes it, saying that he's the one and only way. He says, you cannot get into heaven any other way except through him. So, what are you going to do with that? Now, you could, you can say, well, if Jesus claimed that he's the only way to get into heaven, uh, he must have been a, a lunatic, a crazy man. Or like someone who believes that they're, uh, you know, Napoleon or a hard-boiled leg or something. He was just crazy. Or you could say, well, he's a liar. I don't believe him. If he said he's the only way to get into heaven, he was a liar. Or you could say, I believe him. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior, the one who died for my sins, the only way to get into heaven. I believe him. Now, if you look at John chapter 3, verse 36, this is the position that you find yourself in right now. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. I believe on the Son, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, for my salvation. I believe He's my Savior. He died for my sins. I believe I'm going to heaven for one reason. Because Jesus died for my sins. He's my Savior. So because of that, it says, I have everlasting life. But that verse goes on to say, And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Are you one of those people that does not believe on the Son? Do you not believe on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your Savior? Then you don't have everlasting life. You're not going to go to heaven and live forever in heaven. So what will happen to you? It says at the end of that verse, the wrath of God abideth on him. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So the question is, aren't there other ways to get into heaven? And the Bible clearly says no. There is no other way. You believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, as your Savior, you go to heaven. 
You don't believe that? You, you won't get into heaven. You have the wrath of God on you. Jesus said he's the way to heaven, the one and only way. So, what will you do with Jesus? Will you believe him and receive eternal life in heaven as a free gift? Well, I look forward to your comments. Bless you in the name of Jesus.